OpenAI just secretly rolls out the file search tool, which is a game changer because the file search tool implements all the best search practices all in one tool out of the box so that your assistant can retrieve the right data from your files as well as augment the model's responses. So before you start implementing file search tool in your OpenAI assistant, watch this video because I'm going to reveal how it works. What is the difference between the previous retrieval augmented system? What is semantic search and how you can benefit from a file search system that stores up to 10,000 files. So watch this video until the end so you know exactly how to implement this in your OpenAI Assistant framework. If you've been using OpenAI before, you know that it was using the Retrieval Augmented Generation but it now moved away from just the Retrieval Augmented Generation to an innovative file search method using Vector Database. If you've ever wondered how AI can more effectively manage and utilize large data sets, especially in creating smarter AI assistants, this video is for you. Okay, before we dive into vector databases and the new file search method, let's talk about the tool that OpenAI used in its previous assistant version which was the retrieval augmented generation system now even though it's a great uh, feature to augment your models with your own documents uh, uh, knowledge knowledge base etc it came with some limitations especially when it comes to scalability speed and also the cost Additionally, it only did keyword searches which limited its ability to understand intent, context, or meaning from the user's query. In order to understand RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation, let's just focus on the word generation. Now, generation is a big component or feature of LLM model, which is to generate text, images, video, audio, etc. So that is the generation piece. So as you know, LLM or large language models are trained on historical data and it has a cutoff date. So it's only going to generate responses based on the data from the past. So it will come across some limitations, for example, the source and being out of date. So if you were to ask the assistant about the weather in Houston, Texas today, it's just going to give you a general response about the weather throughout the year. It's, it, it still needs a relevant source like the news channel or uh, perhaps up-to-date information to be able to augment the response with that kind of knowledge. And that's where retrieval augmented generation comes in. This is where you can upload your own documents. Uh, you can also provide relevant sources like research papers um, or reports, etc that the LLM model can pull from. So when it has that information, the LLM model goes and reference that specific information to augment its response. And your responses are much more uh, credible, much more reliable, much more up-to-date, and it avoids that common pitfall of hallucination. Which is when the LLM model just makes up random stuff uh, without any kind of knowledge whatsoever. So how does this work exactly? For example, the user searches for cat and we have several documents that contain the keyword cat along with relevant text associated with it. So when user searches for the word cat, the LLM model pulls from all the relevant text that contains the word cat and it does so by a process called chunking. It takes out chunks uh, that contains the word cat and it basically, you can specify in the number of chunks that you would like to have, and it's going to augment the LLM model with those specific chunks. So now the, the LLM model has context that it found cat in this body of text, and it can respond accordingly. Now the file search method already has all the best search and retrieval practices inbuilt into its system. So that means you have RAG as well as something called a vector database. So having this system means that you're not just limited to keyword searches and RAG. You can now also do semantic searches, which means that the model can now derive meaning from the user's query and context as well. So it helps with the intent recognition. So for example, if the user asks an animal similar to a dog that is a pet, because the text is stored as vector embeddings, which is a numerical format, the LLM model can reference 
the body of text to find out what animal is closest to a dog. And that relationship is very evident using a, something called a semantic search. So you're not just finding chunks from keyword searches, you're also finding out different context meanings. So if you've heard about SQL or NoSQL and traditional databases, while efficient for straightforward data queries, fall short when handling complex unstructured data like image, large text, or dynamic user inputs. This limitation becomes evident when building advanced AI ap applications that need to understand and process this kind of data effectively. Enter vector databases. These aren't your typical databases. They're engineered to handle the complexity of unstructured data. Vector databases convert data into numerical formats known as embeddings. These embeddings can then be quickly searched through to find the most relevant information in response to your query. What that means to you is that you can scale your OpenAI chatbots as well as process that information much more rapidly and efficiently. If you've ever wondered how Netflix recommends you movies that are similar to each other or perhaps um, properties that are similar to each other in a real estate search listing, it's because of the magic of unstructured data and vector databases. Vector databases convert unstructured data into numerical representations that can be easily read by the computer so that it understands similarities between uh, words, images, sentences, and so much more. I'll try not to get too technical when explaining the vector embeddings. Essentially, think of words, sentences, images represented in numerical formats. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to use a two-dimensional numerical vector and, uh, and uh, going to categorize each of these vectors on color. Now, this categorization is done by a machine learning model that just looks at the distance between each of these vectors. You can visualize each of these words in a two-dimensional space and the closest each of these objects are to each other, the similar they are. And that's how a vector search or an LLM understands similarity, context, and meaning behind each of these objects. Now, the vector dimensions could be more than two-dimensional. I've just used two-dimensional just for the purposes of explaining this. But understand, by being numerical, it helps the LLM model to pick up the similarities and context behind each object and produce you the best results possible when you are doing a query that requires a lot of context and meaning behind it. To explain this even further, if you go to Amazon and search for something for your hair, the search engine understands that you're looking for shampoo or products for your hair. This is because it understands meaning. Now, now that you have an idea about RAG vector databases as well as semantic search, let's help you navigate the OpenAI documentation. So you'll notice now you have something called a file search under documentation. Don't worry, I'll show you in a little bit how you can also load up your files into uh, your OpenAI Assistant and implement the file search feature. Now before we do, let's understand what other additional benefits you get through the file search method. It rewrites user queries to optimize them for search. As a developer, you probably came across the pain of constantly reminding your chatbot to reference the knowledge base because it has a tendency to hallucinate and make up stuff and not necessarily listen to the instructions. So file search method already comes pre-built instructions for the assistant to find the best relevant information that is provided. Take a look at the documentation in detail, look at the known limitations, report back in the comments what you find and um, if you've experienced any kind of issues with the uh, file search feature. Another application is vector database can scale without compromising speed. You can store information over long periods of time. It's crucial for application requiring historical data, analysis, or continuous learning. You can also have temporary uh, knowledge bases that is discarded after a certain period of time. So you can have expiration policy, which helps you with your cost management. To help you jumpstart loading up your file to the assistant to implement the file search feature, I created a Google Collaboratory Notebook. So let's get started. We're going to first install the OpenAI package into the notebook. Uh, this will be the latest OpenAI version. Now, if you already have API key, you're gonna plug it in under the secrets panel. You're gonna run the second block and 
your environment should be ready. Then we're gonna create an assistant. This assistant is called a real estate agent. You're an expert real estate agent. Use your knowledge base to answer questions about provided properties. Easy, simple, prompt. Let's see how it responds. In the next block of code, I just wrote some code so that I can upload the files for my local directory and then upload it into the vector store. This is what the data looks like. It's going to be a CSV file of all the properties. I pulled it out from data.gov. It's a list of all real estate properties from a, a property site. If you work in real estate, you know how important it is to provide accurate, timely recommendations of properties that are available to your prospects. And you could also include images here, links, and other formats that could be unstructured. And uh, we just put this into a docx file just to see if the assistant can also understand uh, CSV data in a docx file. We then used a, the vector store create function to create our vector store containing that data. Every vector store will have a vector store ID. So print it out, save it, and then we're going to use that to update our assistant with the vector ID. Following the assistant framework, the next step we're gonna do is create a new thread with our message. So our message is gonna be what properties are similar to 130 Darling Street. This is a property provided in the file itself. So we're going to see if um, the assistant can use the semantic search to recommend us properties that are similar and also tell us why they're similar. So we're also going to use the streaming functions. These are provided by OpenAI to stream responses from the assistant. Okay, so let's run the assistant. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's looking good. The assistant is using the file search feature to uh, look up that information and now it's going to return us the response. The property is similar to 130 Darling Street based on attributes like leasing status, field not in use status, and construction date. Um, so yeah, they, they also provided why they're similar, so this is great. You could also specify uh, properties that are close to each other in distance, then it will use the uh, address of the properties to provide you a more accurate recommendation. So let's go ahead and specify in the prompt uh, or message itself what properties are close to 130 Daring Street in distance. And uh, let's run the assistant again. The properties close to 130 Darling Street in East Hartford based on their geographic uh, proximity uh, in the same city, East Har Hartwood. So we go back to the data set. Notice that it accurately identified the city and the address and gave you that recommendation. I've linked up a Google Collaboratory notebook to get you started. The link will be in the description below. So it's absolutely free, just adapt it to your needs. Also, if you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. The school community is gonna be the first link in the description. Check it out and join before we go viral. Advancements and code with me in Python. Uh, I'll show you how you can set up your assistants, how to write Python code for generative AI. Okay, you've loaded up your data using a file search method. Now you need to deploy your assistants using streaming features. Watch this video to get an idea how streaming works with Streamlit. And watch this video to learn how you can scrape all the transcripts from your favorite YouTuber and turn it into an AI chatbot. GPT Pioneers, let's go.